Okay, uh, here we are again with the B and G show, and uh, what we want to uh, tell you as a uh, hunter or trapper, we want to give you information, information so you can become a uh, more informed hunter or trapper. And, and today, what we're going to talk about mostly is the market, and then also just certain regions. We want to encourage you to uh, continue trapping and in your in your areas. You know, so uh, what we're going to do is give you some ideas about uh, just some of the areas where we uh, have routes that you might not know about but uh, we're gonna start with just this is uh December 14th 2018 that we're doing this so just so it's dated and so guys gonna talk about the market the fur market okay go ahead all right um, this morning uh, when I got up I had an email from a trapper uh, and I'll just read it really quickly his name is Rich Patton I told him I'd give him a shout out uh, why do you post a market blog once a month and then stop September 18th. Uh, very good point. Most of us would like to hear things as the trapping hunting season progresses. What about prices by region? Or do you only do that for Iowa, Dakotas, Minnesota, and Wisconsin? Heck, why does anybody trap east of the Big River and south of Wisconsin? Okay, so what we're gonna try and do is we'll focus on all the, all the items. But I'm gonna start with, uh, as I go down the list of animals, some animals that are kind of out of, of our region that are more you know, in some of these other area uh, Rich does happen to be from Indiana, um, so maybe we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, those, those items, but also item other air all over the United States that are outside of Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, uh, North and South Dakota, Nebraska. Okay, so to talk about the fur market uh, in general, there, there's, I, I typically start out my talks like this, you can't talk about the fur business without talking about ranch mink. And what's going on in the ranch mink business is, is huge right now. And what's going on is this, is there is a massive consolidation. And uh, we are gonna lose a vast uh, uh, number of ranchers this year. We are gonna lose a vast number of manufacturers in China and around the world that produce coats. We are gonna lose vast amounts of skin dealers. We are gonna lose a lot of infrastructure in the mink business in the next, uh, uh, from now, uh, going forward for five years. I mean, is there going to be a, a ranch? Why? Mink? Why are we going to lose? Okay. Why are we going to lose that? Basically, um, when the ranch mink price went up, we had a demand that was masked because the, the Chinese were opening up so many retail, wholesale, and manufacturing facilities that we didn't really know what demand was because just to fill all these stores, to fill all these manufacturing facilities, to fill all these wholesalers, you had to have so many skins that the, the, the demand, true demand, and now, as we, it's obvious, becoming obvious that we didn't need all of these wholesalers, retailers, and manufacturers, they're all liquidating. And they're all, of course, liquidating at the same time. So now they're masking demand on the way down. There might even be a little better demand for a ranch mink coat in China than what we actually think there is because everybody's just unloading skins. So um, how does this affect the wild fur business? Um, well, so what you're saying is the price of the ranch mink is going down. The price, That's, the price okay. of because of all this wholesale liquidation, the price of ranch mink is going down. And of course, the first thing that a rancher or a trapper will tell me or ask me, they'll say, "Well, gosh, you know, you're gonna, you know, get rid of all of these uh, mink, and the price of ranch mink will go up, and that'll really help wild fur." And that's actually exactly the opposite of how the uh, the fur business works. The fur business is a fashion business, and Restricting supply never makes price go up. I mean, it can't hurt if you restrict supply, but basically you will never force prices up by having less of something in the fur business. The prices on skins goes up because there is some increased demand. In other words, something's in style. I mean, we'll have Western coyotes produced this year, we'll be at a record number, and the price is at a record price. Um, the, uh, you know, raccoon will be at 50 year lows this year as far as production, or maybe even more than that. And yet, um, the, the price is, is, is fairly nominal. So, uh, quantities in the fur business are, are not like other industries where when they're restricted, the price can go up. You restrict the supply of oil, the price goes up. Restricting the, the quantities of furs, I mean, maybe a little bit if, if the demand is really hot, but it's always a demand driven. Uh, thing I often tell trappers, I say, you know, in 1990, if you offered bell bottoms for sale at two dollars a piece, you know, nobody would have bought them. They had been in style in the 70s, and nobody would buy them in the 90s. And that's what fur is when it's not in fashion, and the mink coat is not really in fashion in China right now. 
so the price is very cheap and there's you can't just restrict the supply and make it go up it's not going to make it go into fashion that's because it's a luxury it's not a necessity if anything's a luxury then it's not based upon uh, supply it's actually based upon uh, luxuries based upon uh, demand. actually demand yeah, yeah. so yeah. Anyway, um, in, unless we can change the minds of you know Chinese consumers, you know we're not going to see uh, you know the price of ranch meat go up until maybe re supply could restrict it enough that uh, it becomes fashionable again because you know nobody has it. So the reason we talk a little bit about ranch meat is because even though we may have some items right now, and uh, co co uh, coyotes are obviously a, something aside from that, but we might have some items that have some decent demand right now, but there is an overall uh, difficulty in the fur business because almost everyone in our industry has some exposure some way or somehow to the ranch meat business you know our Chinese can uh, uh, rat customers muskrat customers you know they have to compete with a, a mink uh, for a liner for a Chinese mink or, or whatever uh, you know even raccoons you know are used for liners some of the lighter weight ones you know that's competing directly with with a ranch fox or or even a ranch mink. So, so it's just it's always something when the ranch mink is going up. It's always helpful for our industry, and uh, even though we're in really in a different kind of business, and when the ranch mink is going down, it's also difficult. So, with that, I'm going to kind of run down some of the items, and I'm going to not start with the the ones that we typically talk about, you know, coyote uh, and raccoon, and maybe a little bit of muskrats, and I'm going to try and focus on some of these that are outside of the uh, our, our, our some of our normal areas where we buy. But the one I'll start with is otter, and uh, you know, otter uh, has been um, the last few years has been relatively cheap, and last year it came up a little bit for us. And uh, actually, right now, I would definitely say it's a bright spot for us uh, for in the industry. And in some areas, I mean, Illinois, we can get five. Some of the southern states, um, it's unlimited as far as you know how many skins uh, a trapper can take, and you know, it could be a big part of their revenues. If you're in an unlimited otter state. Um, I would say definitely focus on them. Um, the otter is, I would say, 30, 40, and even some grades may be as high as, you know, 50% over last year's uh, prices. Uh, right now, I think we're paying top of uh, 40 on dry otters, and it, and it could be, uh, we, we may raise that price uh, relatively soon. So it's a fairly tough grade, but, you know, still, this is much better than the, you know, the $15, $20 that we were talking about just a couple of years ago, and even, you know, somewhat last year. So that's definitely uh, an animal to focus on um, for you know for guys because a lot of the southern guys that are tra going to trap they haven't even started yet. Well, they have, but yeah, they're, they're, they're getting just, started. They're just yeah. getting started. Yeah. And some of those guys, I'll, I, the next one I'll talk about is not not such good news. Although as a southern or a uh, was how we should we say this maybe an off section trapper, a trapper that's trapping out east or whatever, the beaver market is something that kind of goes hand in hand. Um, with the otters, the beaver will not be worth quite what it was uh, last year. However, um, like we tried to, you know, convince trappers last year, you know, when you take into consideration the castorium that you get out of the beaver, you know, the the hide is readily marketable. You know, it's not like you know some sections of you know very poor sections of say raccoon even. You know, it's very difficult to even market them. You know, all all beavers, you know, certainly have value. So the the kind of the otter. You know, slash beaver trapper in the south or in the southeast, and that uh, Gary will talk about some of the places we go. You know, that that's going to definitely be uh, a, a better uh, a better scenario for you guys this year. Um, bobcat, uh, we are not um, you know huge western bobcat uh, uh, buyers. However, in the commercial sections, we definitely are aggressive players, and we handle a big quantity every year. And that's also in some sections that we don't usually talk about as much. But um, you know, sometimes you know some of the bigger males and stuff will will definitely see price increases uh, from last year. The commercial goods will still be you know relatively cheap, but anything maybe a little bit better uh, will be worth a little bit more. I mean, the, the, we started off the year pretty cheap on uh, commercial bobcats, but the, the the better end of the commercial end, you know, will be worth more money. The the poorer end will be very similar to last year. Okay. Um, and I know we did a muskrat video last week. Um, we didn't really talk much about prices, but a, a muskrat video of this guy is from Indiana that wrote the email. Um, you know, Northern Indiana has quite a few muskrats um, and, and a very good muskrat. The muskrat market has definitely improved in the last two months. Um, 
I would say uh, for a very heavy, you know, Indiana muskrat, we would probably top right now at six. Most of the fallish um, western rats, you know, we're you know around five top. But uh, the uh, the muskrat uh, belly plates are are very uh, are, are I would say quite popular. Korea is taking some again, so the uh, the muskrat market has is generally. Um, is improved and that and muskrat you know can affect you know people all out east you know all down the eastern seaboard you know indiana michigan ohio lots of parts of the country that maybe like this guy points out we don't always focus on but that that's definitely a positive sign so actually a lot of these items that are sort of positive you know are, are um, uh, in those areas um, the next one i will talk about and we have talked about this previously the the coyote that's caught you know obviously not in the very south but in, in that Indiana region, in that Ohio region, in that Michigan area, is definitely going to have more value than it did um, a year ago. It's a little darker coyote, but as long as it isn't that real dark, that real casty, doggish looking uh, skin, it, it's going to be hair, yeah. poor, and coarse hair. It's a little softer. Um, it doesn't have to have the super white belly or anything, but it'll have, um, you know, considerably, I would say some grades, how much more? 30%? Sure. Yeah, 30, as much as 30% more than a year the ago. heavier stuff. Yeah. yeah, especially the heavier stuff um, from those regions. You know, upper Michigan, um, you know, Gary's going to talk a little bit. Even in the New York State, um, some of the coyotes caught are not uh, too dark that they can't be used for, for what we need for, for trimming. So kind of some good news for um, a lot of those areas that we often don't talk about. Um, I'm actually, as if I'm pointing off over here where the, those areas are. I don't know where those areas are. Um, Okay, the next one um, we'll talk about, and this would be kind of a, a maybe a negative one, and that would be raccoon in those areas. The coon that we're focusing on this year is, is that, that's gone up in value is the bigger sizes, heavier skins, stuff that can be used for trimming, not stuff that's going to be used for liners in China that's got to compete against cheap uh, ranch fox pieces or, you know, cheap mink or whatever. That stuff is going to be still, it's going to be very difficult. So if you're in one of those areas and you can pick you know, do I trap for otters, or do I trap for beaver, or do I trap for raccoon? I mean, I, I certainly, you know, would focus on, uh, you know, the otter and beaver, or if you're in one of those areas that's lucky enough to have a nice quantity of coyotes, you know, obviously, we want to, you, you want to focus on coyotes, definitely. Just, just, just one thing that you should remember is they're not making raccoon coats anymore. You don't go to uh, Siberia and Russia and see raccoon coats. We have to get that in our heads. It, the raccoons are literally, We'll say it again. Are you being used for trimming? So white leather, white leather um, color isn't as important. So that has a lot to do. Uh, a blue pelt caught early, it doesn't look good on a collar. White leather is very important for uh, the collar industry. Trimming. Gary obviously buys in Iowa. He's a golden triangle coon buyer, so that's why he always wants to talk about the coon. So, but uh, yeah, that's uh, where the, where the coon is, is is worth more. And you know, I can't make excuses for. You know the fact that uh, we're not looking for specifically an Indiana raccoon, but uh, you know that's that's just the the nature of the beast. The the, the 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 flatter raccoon that are competing with a ranch mink for a liner for a place in a woman's liner in liner in China has really got to compete at a very cheap price to be successful. So that's it's just impossible um, to really to to be to make money off that as a trapper. Okay. Um, a, a couple other things um, out east. I know red fox are a big thing, and I would say if there's even can even uh, compared to wild mink, I would suggest that red fox is even worse compared to last year than wild mink. It is an item that is just um, it is especially the eastern type red fox. It is solely used um, as a liner today. It's not used. Um, it's not really used for trimming the flatter goods, and it's also. Um, it's, it's competing against that ranch mink, and it's just very, very cheap. So um, that's an item that if you have one of these other articles that we're talking about, you know, even muskrat, certainly, I would focus on those. I would not focus on the work it takes to, to trap a coyote, or to trap a red fox, I'm sorry. And wild mink sort of goes along with that. That's another item. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of miles to trap wild mink. Um, 
I, I wouldn't focus on. It's it's obviously directly uh, competing with the wildlife. Do you want to say something about politics or tariffs or anything like that? We that's the, just changed. Okay, so the, we the, think it's changed. The tariff situation. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of done with my list, so I will talk just a little bit before Gary goes into some of the regions where we buy some of these and how to you know who buys them for us in those areas. Um, the tariff situation is still a problem. However, it appears as if it's you know it might get resolved, and. Uh, Right now, we're up like 10% as far as what we're paying for tariffs going into China. You know, we don't know if there's a settlement of the tariff situation, you know, what that's going to mean. Are we going to go back to the old 25% or are we going to go to 10%? Just I mean, a, a side note on that is like we're in the wool industry and in the business, and actually, the, our wool customers are treating it as if there was no resolution. They're living in the fear that something could change or happen that uh, there is not peace in this trade war. And that's the way they're looking at it. So, And, and I would add to that, they, they don't even look at it as, as much as it's still happening as the fact that they look at it as a little bit that they're mad at America. And they just won't buy, oh, it's American wall? I, I'm just not gonna buy it because it's American. We're at, we're at war with them. You know, five years ago when to when Japan had the issues with uh, with China, they had some, some uh, friction. You know, the whole country just said, I'm not buying Toyotas anymore. And that was it. I mean, Toyota couldn't sell a car in, in, in China. So, you know, they, they're a little more, um, their politics play a little bit that way. And so it's, 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 it's difficult to get into a trade war with the Chinese because if they find out it's American, sometimes it, you can be penalized for it. Um, was there anything else you wanted me to talk about on the market? No. Well, maybe I'll just say, maybe say something else. One thing we're noticing right now, well, currency, price of oil, you know, just say that's stable or favorable, unfavorable, <clears throat> what we're seeing is that um, manufacturers are not aggressively going after stockpiles of fur and saying, this is what I'm going to do next year, and uh, I already know what I'm going to do next year. They're not doing that. So we don't have a lot of aggressive buyers in the market that know where they're going to sell their coats for next year. So what they're doing is they're converting anything that they can get cash for, and that's why there's a reduction in the price of coats in China. They want cash because they want to be able to adjust to the market next year. And that happened in Russia, and it has been happening in Russia the last several years, but we see that in China right now. People want to be liquid, and the only people that are buying actually skins are the people that are buying skins, you could say, are the skin dealers, right? We see, we see that happening. So that if you understand that dynamic right now, we don't have an aggressive manufacturer saying, I want this for next year because of the uncertainty or because that's the way the market is now. It's going to change very quickly, and something can become worth something quickly. And they've been punished in the last five years if they did come out with a collection right. quickly, because you know, as as the season keeps progressing on these ranch meat, it just keeps getting cheaper. So, or or for that matter, on some of these wild fur skins. But it, it, they've just been punished if they had if they had stock because it became worth less and less. So nobody nobody wants to touch stock right now. Okay, so is there anything else we want to talk about with the market? I think that's pretty good on the market. Why don't you go tell them okay. some of these areas so, that I talked about. First of all, let's just, you know, east of the Mississippi, we have a buyer in the state of New York named Mark Boardman, Seneca Furs, and he has 28 stops in the state of New York. And we buy everything. We buy, it because you guys come with a whole bag of everything. You don't, you have a diversity in the type of trapper you are and the type of, you know, species that you catch. So he's buying everything. We buy uh, green beaver out there. Uh, we're buying the raccoon. And Guy said the, coy the coyotes are good out there. Actually, you can get heavier, softer, they're a little bit darker coyotes. You can get good coyotes out there. So, uh, and of course, and we the, need them. And we need them. We need them. We can use them. Uh, the muskrats are great out there. Uh, we're buying muskrats. What, what about the states surrounding uh, New York? Okay, Isn't Connecticut, we have a stop in. Okay, so he actually has a stop in Connecticut. We have a stop in Connecticut. And then in the you know, we run along the southern part of New York State there, right next to Pennsylvania. So uh, you can look at our schedule uh, when, when we stop in the southern part of New York. You can go there if you're from Pennsylvania. We have stops in Ohio. We have two stops in Ohio. Actually, we're there uh, next week, okay, on Saturday and Sunday. Um, we talked about some items out there, uh, you know, uh, muskrats, maybe some of your heavier, heavier coyotes. So those are something to think about in Ohio. I mean, two, okay. we stopped right in near Toledo. So, you know, um, anybody, you know, in that whole northwestern uh, area, anybody, uh, okay. it's, a, it's a very uh, handy stop. And it is this year going to be on Sunday, I believe, right? On 
on Sunday. Okay, so Saturday, that'll be Saturday night. So yeah, so uh, yeah, so those are convenient times for the, so it's twenty miles southeast of Toledo. Uh, yeah, southeast of Toledo, so it's very accessible on on the interstate. In Maryland, um, there's a lot of muskrat trappers. Uh, there's fox trappers. In, it's the beginning of April. It'll be on a Saturday. Uh, you can check the website for that. Talk about your North Carolina. And then the South, uh, North Carolina, Georgia, and South Carolina. Um, we'll be there at the end of March, the beginning of April also. And uh, guys, go after the otter. Uh, we can use the otter. Remember, you can bring them to us. Frozen and Heart. green. And for, yeah, frozen heart, just like the beaver. The beaver, people ask, how do you bring the beaver? You can either fold them in half, so, uh, fold them in half like that, or just the way to bring the beaver. And then Guy already spoke about the commercial cats. There's a lot of people in the hill, the better cat, uh, but also you get in the, in the lowlands, you get the, the uh, more commercial cats. So that's still all in play, we're, and we're just as anxious to come back as we were last year, so uh, be ready for us. And then we've added a route, uh, a stop actually in Lebanon, Tennessee, and that's going to be right around the beginning of uh, April also. So look on our schedule for that. It's going to be on a Sunday evening in Lebanon, Tennessee. Okay, and so I told you about so New York, Tennessee, Kentucky, that whole Tennessee, area, yeah, right? it, uh, uh, Nashville. So it's kind of in the center of the state, and so you can all come there. And we also stop in the western part of North Carolina in Asheville. So you know, there's, there's, you just think about how close you are to Nashville from, you know, West Virginia or coming up from Alabama or something like that. If that works for you. Um, it might it might work for you, Kentucky. So that's that. And then in the in the southwest, you could say uh, we have Ronnie Lewing and uh, James Gillespie. They have uh, four routes in uh, Texas. That's on our website. Uh, it was actually just uh, put up uh, today in Texas. And then in Arkansas, also they have uh, they go to the two major uh, fur sales. They'll be at those. You can contact. You can look at our website and get the contact information of where they'll be for those two. Two, two things, Missouri and Michigan. Missouri. Uh, Missouri, we have one stop. One, we have one, one weekend, route. one route on there, and then kind of in the northwestern to the north uh, central part of the state. Uh, you can check on that. We're on there on a Friday night and a Saturday. So uh, people from, you know, in, in Missouri, you can be an auto trapper, you can be a, a mink trapper. Uh, some of your, your raccoon have value there, uh, your, your bigger sizes, uh, your prime skins, so that's something you want to think about there. Your, of course, the beaver also. Um, uh, so out west, you know, uh, Ronnie, he's buying. Another thing maybe to think about, guys, even in the east, is, is gray fox. Why not trap value? Who knows? Uh, and, and a lot of these markets, we're talking, we don't stop there until four, four months from today. So a lot of things can change, and we're hoping for you know something positive, but things can change in four months. So um, that's the routes. Michigan, I, Michigan. Oh, Michigan. Next week. We'll what do you want to say well, next? Go state. ahead. We do cover the whole state of Michigan, and we'll be there uh, next week. And that the guy did mention you know east of the Mississippi or south of yeah uh, uh, outside of Wisconsin. Yeah, okay, and so we, we do have routes in Michigan, and then yeah, all next week and the UP as well next week. So. And the UP also. So. Um, I think we've covered most, and, and there are some things we're working on as a company, uh, just for the heritage of the industry and the, uh, you could say the uh, um, tracking, uh, just tracking uh, wild furs to uh, make our product uh, more valuable. So there are things we're working about. Uh, we're in the beginning stages of that. Uh, so just remember that. So remember uh, to uh, look at our fur routes on the website. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And we have this Christmas giveaway coming up here. Uh, this is uh, it's a sheared muskrat belly. And she can come up here, right here. This is her last day. Oh. She's been with us for 25 years. Her name is, uh, I forgot what it was. What is it? George. The lot, yeah, she rode with George for, uh, for many years and wrote checks and she's done everything. She has her CDL, she drives truck, and she answers your phone and she tells you uh, she, she, she knows more about the business than both of us sitting here at the table. Okay? So like it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's just a wonderful, much. wonderful yeah. lady. And, uh, You'll probably give see her once in yeah. a while on a truck. Though. They're not going to let me completely go. Thanks, yeah, Gary. I appreciate you. it. Yeah. Thank you.
Okay, so um, that's it. Okay, yeah. okay, one more thing is um, I really appreciate uh, his email. And I, I, we really love an email where that's what we're really looking for. And we will certainly, uh, you know, think about using one of your ideas and, you know, show us one of our short um, from Gary and I. Well, I just want to say one thing, and you can maybe give us a good review. I got a really bad review this week, and so <laughs> if you want to, if you want to give us a good review, love your questions. Uh, we love your feedback. We had a, a dealer today that called us up and said, "You guys are doing a great service to the industry because now people really believe, uh, or trappers, hunters believe, and uh, have a have a safe uh, have a safe Christmas and safe New Year, maybe and a safe New Year. Okay. Okay, thanks for joining us. All right, thank you.